Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a just a basic Windows 11 installation, but with the choice of either having a Microsoft account or not having a Microsoft account, which I feel is one of those things which a lot of people are a little bit concerned about due to privacy concerns and basically not wanting to give Microsoft much data if they can possibly help it. So hopefully this video is going to be useful for those of you setting up Windows 11 for possibly the first time and trying to avoid using a Microsoft account, or maybe you want to use a Microsoft account. The same applies, it's uh, the same installation effectively, just one slight change as we go through. But anyway, I'm waffling on now, let's head over to the computer and we'll get things started. Okay, so we're on our desktop here. You can use uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 or various other operating systems. Uh, I'm going to plug in our USB drive. It will be formatted, so make sure it's one that you uh, are okay to lose the data from. And you want to head over to the link here. So I'll put this in the video description, or you can just type into your search engine of choice, the Windows 11 installation, or Windows 11, or download Windows 11, whichever you want to do. Anyway, I digress. So this is the latest version, Windows 11 uh, from 2024, version 24H2. And what we want to do is scroll down. Don't use the installation assistant. We want to go down to here. So create Windows 11 installation media. So we'll click on this part here and we'll save it to our Windows desktop. And that'll be very quick. So we can close that down and we'll start the media creation tool. You'll be asked for user account control. Just click yes. And it'll say getting a few things ready. So basically what it's going to do now is kind of set up the system. You're also going to have to agree to the terms and conditions. If you don't agree to them, then you basically can't download it. So you, know, you have no choice there. Uh, for this section here, the language, you can choose basically whatever you want to. Um, you can go with the default ones, but I'm just gonna choose United Kingdom. And the addition Windows 11, you can't change that at the moment. So just leave that as it is. Again, if you want to just choose the recommended options. When you're happy, click on next, and it will say choose which media to use. So it's gonna be USB flash drive or an ISO file. If you wanna burn an ISO, to a DVD later, you can do it that way, or if you're using a USB drive, which I think most people will, choose this option here. The drive needs to be at least eight gigabytes in size. So when you're ready, click on next, and it'll ask you to select a USB drive. It's detected our drive letter D with no label, so that is the one we're gonna use. Click on next, and that will say getting a few things ready. And essentially now what it's gonna do is go ahead and download the files from the Microsoft servers directly, and then it's going to kind of reassemble them all and then basically burn it onto your USB stick. Don't worry, you can always delete or erase the USB stick after you've installed Windows on it. It isn't permanent, it's like any other program, it's just transferred temporarily. So let it carry on do its thing and we'll come back when there's something to interact with. Okay, so that is done. The USB flash drive is ready. So we can now click on finish and it will just clean up some of the temporary files. So that is pretty much it. You can now delete this file. We'll be needing that again and you can remove the USB drive from the computer. If you want to, you can just quickly check it just to make sure that it has got the required files on, which appears it has. So that is excellent. So now we can go over to our new computer and begin the Windows installation process. Okay, so we've got the computer turned on now. I'm just gonna tap the delete key to enter the BIOS so we can force it to boot from our USB drive. You may not have to do this. You may find it just boots straight away to that anyway if you've got an empty primary disk. So on most boards, if you go to save and exit, and then you should find your boot override, yours may be different, but we're gonna choose our Kingston Data Traveler drive, which has got Windows on. So we're gonna choose that, press enter. So now it's gonna start booting from the Windows installation file. So at this point here, we get the select language settings. So do this as normal. So language to select, choose English and whatever obviously is your thing. The keyboard method, choose United Kingdom, and you get the install Windows 11. You have to click on there to say that you agree, click next, and you can say here that I don't have a product key. Choose your Windows version, so we're gonna choose Windows 11 Pro. Accept the licenses, and at this part here, if it's got your disk, so we've got, there's our primary disk, so we'll delete that partition there. So we'll just choose disk zero and click next and just go through these usual settings. So now it's gonna start installing Windows 11. So just be patient, let it do its thing. And we'll come back again when there's something to interact with. Okay, so next we have to choose the country or region. So we're in the United Kingdom. 
and we've got the keyboard layout, which is United Kingdom. Do you want to add a second keyboard layout? No, we don't. So next in the part of the installation, it's going to ask you to connect to the network. Now it should connect to the network automatically using the built-in drivers. If for some reason it doesn't, you will need to choose the install driver and actually go to another working computer and download the appropriate drivers for your motherboard. So be that for your Wi-Fi or for the LAN connection, whichever it is, uh, that is part of the default Windows setup. Now in other videos we've done, we've done methods on how to get around this. Uh, if you want to get around this, you can basically do, you can do shift F10 and you can go in here and do the IP config, release, renew, etc., all that kind of stuff. But we're doing the default installation here. So we're not going to go through that. So next we are connected. So we can click on next and you get the choice to name your device. So just call this uh, PC. Again, after the reboot, it's going to try and connect you to the network. And it's picked up our network, so that is excellent. So we'll click on Next. So at this point here, we do have some options. So if you're using this for personal use and you wish to use a Microsoft account, then you can choose this icon at the top and you'll either create a Microsoft account or use an existing one. If you don't want to use a Microsoft account or alternatively you're connecting to a school network or a domain, you can choose this one. You don't have to have a network, you don't have to have a domain, but if you don't want to use a Microsoft account, this is the option to choose. So set up for work or school, we're gonna do this one for simplicity and also so I don't have to disclose my Microsoft account. So click on next, and it'll ask you to sign into your work or school account, but we don't wanna do that, so we'll choose sign in options. You can choose face, fingerprint, pin, or security key if you've got those for your organization or you can choose join domain instead. Now we haven't got a domain, we're not gonna be using a domain, but this is one way of skipping the Microsoft account. So all we can do now is just, we can type in PC1 and click next. Create a password if you wish to. I'm gonna erase this account straight away, so I'm not gonna bother. So just click on next, but obviously I would suggest you do use a password of some sort or at least a pin. And then you can go through and choose about Microsoft, whether or not you wish to have them kind of somewhat spying on your device some of it is useful it's entirely up to you so i'm just going to choose yes and we'll go yes for all of them most people say no for all of this again read through them see which is best for you if you don't want intrusions or you don't want microsoft to know as much as they would normally choose no if you don't really care click yes next is going to try and download the windows updates if any are available so again just uh, sit there, be patient, and let it do its thing. We'll come back when there's more to interact with. So at this point now, Microsoft is gonna be doing updates in the background, rather than waiting for you to go straight into Windows, it basically does it all for you now. So what it'll probably do, being that you're connected to the internet or you have network connectivity, it'll go down and try and download drivers and software updates and that kind of stuff. As you can see, our resolution has changed back to 4K from 1080p, because it is a 4K monitor. The scaling is awful, so I do apologize for that. But yeah, it's basically downloading the drivers necessary for your system. I would always recommend after Windows is installed to go ahead and install the latest drivers for your motherboard, your graphics card, and any other peripherals you have attached. But Microsoft will do its best to try and kind of download them in advance for you. And there we go, our resolution has come back for some bizarre reason. So now we're getting towards the end of the process and it's doing some of the final updates. After this has gone to 100%, we should be rebooted and uh, straight into Windows. Okay, so it appears it's all done. So it's just getting the final things ready for us. Okay, so Windows has now finished installing. So there'll still be some background tasks going on. Um, if you've got a relatively modern motherboard, you may well find that something like this will pop up saying, do you want to install drivers, etc." That is entirely up to you, whether you wish to do it that way through the MSI or whichever brand installer you want to. That is entirely up to you. If you try and close it, you'll probably get uh, a message. Also, if you go into Device Manager, you'll probably find that there's still going to be a few devices which aren't fully installed. So even though Windows is installed, you'll see there are couple of problem devices there, Camlink Pro, this is our capture card. But other than that, it looks like it's uh, it's all pretty good. So it is a usable system. I would also as well at this point go into start and then go into settings 
and then down into Windows updates. And you'll probably see there is still an absolute ton of install updates and drivers to install. So go ahead and do those before you start doing anything too drastic. And also you may find there's also things like cumulative update previews. Uh, whether you want to install those, that's entirely up to you. But that is Windows essentially installed, just remaining for the uh, updates and driver packs, if you wish to do that. That is pretty much it. And we don't have a Microsoft account, of course, if you want to. You can still use a Microsoft account. You can go to the Microsoft website and sign in, and use all your Microsoft products if you wish to. Uh, also as well, at this point, if you want to get rid of any of the kind of bloatware, you can just right click and choose uninstall and just go through and remove anything which you're unlikely to use. Uh, maybe the new Outlook, not many people like that. So you can uninstall that, uh, the Office app, uninstall. So you can make it as clean as you want to or you can just leave it as it is. The choice effectively is down to you. So there you go, there is a basic Windows 11 installation with or without a Microsoft account. I think for a lot of people, especially if this is your maybe your first PC build and you're kind of a little bit unsure how it all goes, hopefully this video has given you some, uh, some tips and hints and also some options there. So if you don't want to have that Microsoft account, which a lot of people are very much against, then this is an easy way of doing it without having to kind of do any hackery or downloading any weird things like Rufus or whatever. So yeah, hopefully this has been useful. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the channel notification. That will be notified of future video releases. But I think that's going to wrap this video up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Or alternatively in our Discord if you get any problems. Thanks for watching.